In this video, we're going to create an object in Fusion 360 to export. Hey everyone, thanks for joining and in this video, the second video in this series, we're going to be creating a basic object in Fusion 360 and exporting it as an OBJ file. One of the workflows that I want to talk about is taking objects from Fusion 360 and into Blender for future processing. And I do want to preface this video by saying a few things. One, I don't consider myself a Blender expert. Now, I've done a lot of playing around with Blender over the past few years, but I haven't really been able to dedicate the time to Blender in order to consider myself an expert. So I'm going to be showing you the workflow of taking objects from Fusion into Blender and how to do a few things, but really use this at your discretion as I'm really going over the process and we're talking about some of the basics. I also want to note that when we do get into Blender, the workflow that I want to show you with these objects is based on some information I found that I'll link in the description. Now there was uh, a user that created some great tutorials and these are on RomanRainer.com, and again the link is in the description. Now Roman has a lot of great information on Blender and some of these advanced sort of structure designs in Blender for additive manufacturing for 3D printing. Now I came across this one on 3D lattice structure design and I found it really interesting. I found the the design aspect of it really interesting and I wanted to see how I could apply it to objects from Fusion 360. So I actually reached out to Roman and he was uh, very helpful. I talked through the process with him a little bit and I wanted to make sure to give him credit because the workflow that we're going over, I've made a few little tweaks to it, but it came directly from his site. He also has uh, some additional things that he does. He sells uh, 3D printed or additive designed jewelry, he has some really cool things like uh, wallets and bow ties and uh, different types of jewelry. So again, check his stuff out. It's really creative stuff and he's been really helpful and I wanna make sure to give him credit where credit's due. So with that out of the way, let's get into making just a basic part in Fusion. So good practice, we're gonna start a new untitled document. We're gonna start a sketch on the top plane and we're gonna start a center point rectangle. If you've never used Fusion before, then make sure you check out the Introduction to Fusion series that I did and that way you can learn all the basics of Fusion before we really dive into this because I'm not going to be covering a lot of these basics. So we're going to create this box. I made it 50 by 150. I'm going to extrude it. I'm going to bring it up 25 millimeters. And then I'm going to add some fillets on the corners. So I'm going to grab all four corners and just round them off. You might be wondering why I would make this in Fusion. This is something I could very easily do in Blender. If you have experience with Blender, you can make a cube, you can scale it out, you can change it, tweak it. The point of this is not to replicate something that we can do it both easily, but to understand the process of taking this from here to another program. So while this is a very simplified representation, you might have an extremely complex design and rather than requiring you to download a file and upload it to Fusion and convert it and all that stuff, we're just going to make a simple box with some fillets. So we're going to save this and I'm going to call this a uh, simple box and just simply save the design. Now that it's saved in my data panel in Fusion 360, it's up on the cloud, I need to convert it to an OBJ or an STL file. These are gonna be the two main ones that I wanna work with in this workflow. And I actually prefer using the export option from the file menu, selecting OBJ, and then exporting that. This does require some conversion. It's not a simple, straightforward download it. It's going to convert it, so it does take a little bit of time. You'll need to check on the job status to make sure that it is processing it, it is creating that OBJ file locally for you. While we're waiting for that to convert, let's go ahead and open up Blender 2.8. I am again using Blender 2.82a. This is the most current version. Whenever you start a new file in Blender, you'll see the version 2.82a at the top right hand corner. If you're using any of the version 2.8s, that's fine. If you're using an older version of 2.7 or even something older, 
the interface is going to look very different. So I would highly suggest that you update to 2.8. There have been a lot of great additions. Uh, it's got the EV rendering in it now. There's a lot of live update particle simulation stuff that you can do. And I'm not really going to go into all those details, but just note that the interface that we're looking at is 2.8, and in this case, 2.82a. Now that we're inside of Blender, I'm going to do the select all, and then I'm going to delete my objects. So I'm going to go to the object dropdown and hit delete. I'm going to hit control Z to undo because one thing that you often see anytime you start a new Blender tutorial is you hit the A key on the keyboard and it selects everything and you hit delete. It's a very quick way to delete everything. I always like to point out the location of the menus because sometimes it's going to be important that we um, find those menus. And it's not always the case, but in a lot of cases, especially with these basic operations, make sure that you know where they are in case you forget the shortcut key. Another note that I do want to point out is we are going to be using an add-in that is not turned on by default. So while we wait for that OBJ to process, I'm going to go up to Edit, Preferences, and I'm going to go into the Add-ons, and I'm going to look for Cell Fracture. So make sure that you have this turned on, and once you have it turned on, you can close your preferences. The Cell Fracture is going to be a way for us to hack up the model a little bit uh, in a unique fashion. So once we import our object, then we'll take a look at that. We can hop back over to Fusion 360, check on the status, the OBJ uh, is still processing. So there are a few more things that we can do in Blender while we wait. So while we're inside of Blender waiting for that OBJ, let's just do a quick refresh on a few different things that we need to know in here. Object in edit mode, these are going to allow us to go back and forth between editing or moving the object as a whole or making changes to it at a finite level. So grabbing a vertex or a group of vertices and manipulating the shape of our object. Edit mode is also important because it allows us to do things like decimate a model. If we bring a file in that has a very fine mesh resolution and we don't like it, we might want to change it. We might want to reduce that mesh count. So the object and edit mode are going to be important to go back and forth. The change of display from shaded to wireframe, that's going to be pretty important as well. And then also just make sure you know where the options are up here for going into your preferences, going into different workspaces if you need it, and just working with some of the different options. You'll note that at the bottom, we didn't really talk too much about it, but we have the timeline at the bottom, which we are going to use in this example. This allows us to play through an animation, and once we create some particles, that'll, that'll help. And then on the right-hand side, we also have uh, zoom in and move the view and toggle the camera view. These are going to be important when we start to work with a camera itself. Uh, so right now we deleted the camera. We're not working with the camera, but once we start working with a camera, then we want to make sure that we understand those. So play around with a lot of these things. Just make sure you get familiar with some of the basics of what we're going to use. Once you're ready to bring in that OBJ file, you're going to go to File. You're going to go to Import, and you're going to select the file type that you're bringing in. In our case, we're going to be bringing in an OBJ, but note that there are a lot of other file types that you can work with. Uh, there's an SVG, which is a vector graphics file if you're working on 2D stuff. There is an STL, which is another standard export that we can do from Fusion. And there's this OBJ file. With the OBJ file, we're going to be looking at the OBJ file that we convert. And again, you're going to have to check in Fusion depending on the complexity of the file, depending on uh, the, the web service, the hosting, you're going to get different results for how long this takes. So sometimes it'll take a little bit longer than others, but just make sure that you go back and forth and, and you, you actually have an OBJ file when you're ready for it. So now that we have it selected, we're going to import and now we have this object that we created in Fusion 360. We've brought it directly into Blender. So this is the first step in this process. Now that we have it in here, let's change our viewport to actually take a look at the geometry underneath. 
This is a bit different than what we would expect to see when we're working in Fusion. We have a lot of these divisions. You can see how the model is broken up into all these triangles. If we want to make changes to this, we can select it. We can go to that edit mode, which again is tab on the keyboard. And then we can do things like go to mesh, clean up, and we can do things like decimate the geometry. A lot of times when we're using these different tools inside of Blender, a small box will pop up in this bottom left hand corner that you'll need to expand in order to manipulate the parameters. If I reduce this value, if I change this decimate value from one to something a bit lower, we're making a lower poly or a low polygon model. We're reducing the number of triangles that are defining the shape. I'm gonna take this all the way down to 0 0.260 and then I'm gonna go back into object mode. If I change it back to shaded, this looks a bit rougher than it did before. And that's okay because in general, we want the lowest number of polygons to represent the object that we need. And then we can go back and we can apply modifiers to it later to smooth it back out. If we're making something for 3D print, you don't really wanna come in and reduce that poly count way down because it's gonna have negative effects downstream for you. But for just some visual representation for what we're doing, this is fine and it's gonna help us. We have a lot more that we need to do to this in order to hack it up and make this 3D lattice structure that we're gonna do. So this is a great time for us to make sure that we save this file. So we'll go ahead and do file save. By default, it'll be called untitled.blend and we're gonna call this one simple box and we're gonna save this file. So since we saved it, it's also a great time for us to stop the video. And when we pick this back up, make sure that you do have your OBJ file imported into Blender. If you want to, you can edit and decimate it to reduce that poly count, but you really don't have to. We'll begin to work with it. We're gonna create some particle systems. We're gonna use that cell fracture. We're gonna create a wireframe and subdivide and really take a look at this model.